So the question is, what are the most popular Dakinis in Himalayan art? So this is uh, an interesting question because it sounds relatively simple, but it can actually get more complicated. But before we get into it, if you like this channel, then please press uh, like. If you if you want to uh, uh, be notified, uh, then press subscribe. And if you're interested in longer videos and uh, more detailed information, then uh, please join Himalayan Art Resources on Patreon and help support the work we do. Now, back to the topic of uh, popular Dakinis. So, on the surface of it, yes, we, we, we can say that there's a certain number that are the most popular and they're the most represented in art. And what are those? Well, uh, three of them are forms of Vajra Yogini. We have the Vajra Yogini of the Naropa tradition, where she's standing on two legs and holding a skull cup up into the air uh, on the left side, and then she's drinking from the, from the skull bowl. Then we have Vajravarahi, form of Vajrayogini, where she has a boar's head either on the right side of her face or on the top of her head, uh, and she stands in a dancing posture. We then have the, the Krodakali, the black form of uh, Vajravarahi. Then we have the lion-faced Dakini, Simhamukha. And then we have Jnana Dakini, that uh, is often a, a partner, a consort to Yogambara and uh, comes out of the Chatur Pitta Tantra. So, th so these are the five. These are the five that are most commonly found in art, both uh, painting, sculpture, murals, whatnot. And uh, we find these with uh, most of the Buddhist traditions as well, in, in different forms, whether they're Sarma or, or later Terma forms of the Nyingma. Um, now, that's the easy part. But when talking about Dakini and Dakinis, I mean, uh, Dakinis is putting an S on, on the end of Dakini is the, the English way of, of pluralizing this word Dakini. Now, Dakini, we have to always remember, is primarily a word associated in the Sarma schools with the wisdom category of Anuttara Yoga Tantra. Uh, and in the method or the, the father tantras and the non-dual tantras, then the term uh, Devi or goddess is, uh, is applied to female forms, meditation forms. So the Dakini is referring to the mother tantras, the wisdom tantras of Anuttara Yoga. So we have to be very careful to always remember this because uh, the art is text-based. Uh, and and we, we need to know where things come from. Now that takes me to another matter, which is the, are Dakinis real or imagined? Are deities real or imagined? And then from that, then we have also the issue of separation and conflation. In some schools and some uh, Buddhist traditions coming out of India and in Tibet and the Himalayas, we have traditions where all deities are conflated together in some way to tell a much uh, grander story and to create a much more unified system of, uh, of religious practice. Separation is has to do with how tantras are created or sutras or dharanis and then how they they come to be related to each other or not related to each other and and so we have this separation and conflation issue with a lot of different uh, uh, tantric deities and it leads into naming issues where you have the term Kubera or Vaishravana or Jambala. Are they the same or are they different? Do you, do you look at it from the point of view of separation uh, textually or do you look at it from the point of conflation textually and from a particular tradition? So, so these, th these are big issues that need to be uh, looked at um, carefully and we will do that another time.